911. What's your emergency? Yes, I need to call the county 911. This is them. What's, what's wrong, bitch? Listen, 631 Ronson Road. Somebody has my daughter. Somebody in full camouflage got Holly. I climbed her and took her to the woods. Please get everybody out there. Okay, they're on their way, sweetie. They're on their way right now. In the quiet town of Decatur County, Tennessee, with a population barely reaching 2,500, the surroundings were filled with lush woods and sprawling farms. This was the hometown of Holly Bobo, a 20-year-old student studying nursing. Holly grew up in a close-knit family with her parents, Karen and Dana Bobo, and an older brother named Clint. Karen, Holly's mother, worked as a teacher at Scotts Hill Elementary School. The family had a musical connection through Holly's cousin, country singer Whitney Duncan, and Holly herself had a passion for singing. Raised in a Christian household, Holly shared a special bond with her mother and was known for her warm and lively personality once you got to know her beyond her initial shyness. Alongside her family ties, Holly had a boyfriend named Drew Scott, with whom she shared dreams of a future together. Drew had given her a promise ring as a symbol of their commitment. Holly was dedicated to her nursing studies at the University of Tennessee, eager to embark on a career in healthcare. Her aspirations revolved around building a life with Drew and making a positive impact as a nurse. On the morning of April 13, 2011, Holly's day began early. As she prepared for an 8 a.m. exam, she was up at 4.30 a.m. studying at the kitchen table while her mother packed her lunch before heading to work. Before leaving for school, Holly received a call from her boyfriend, Drew, who was out turkey hunting on her grandmother's land. After their conversation, she gathered her things and headed towards the carport to leave for school. Around 7.45 a.m. that morning, neighbor James Barnes overheard an argument next door, followed by chilling screams that prompted him to call his mother while driving to work to inform Karen about the disturbing noises he heard. Meanwhile, Clint was awakened by the family dog's barking and witnessed two figures on the carport engaged in what seemed like a heated exchange. One figure was identified as Holly, while Clint assumed the other was Drew due to his camouflage outfit. Uncertain of the situation, Clint hesitated to intervene and tried reaching his mother for clarification, but received no response. Karen was informed by James's mother about the commotion and called home where Clint answered seeking clarity on Holly's whereabouts since she was supposed to be with Drew. It was then that Karen realized something was wrong. Clint observed Holly walking towards the woods with the man but not being dragged. In response to his mother's plea for help, Clint grabbed a gun and saw blood near Holly's car before calling 911 out of concern. Simultaneously, Karen made her own distress call while rushing home with a friend driving her. By 8.10 a.m., authorities had arrived at the scene where Karen desperately searched for her daughter in the woods while Dana found their property surrounded by law enforcement agencies like the TBI, FBI, SWAT, and U.S. Marshals. Despite the chaos and confusion among those present, Dana urged them to act swiftly in bringing Holly back home. As suspicions arose about someone familiar with Holly being involved in her disappearance, investigators confirmed that the bloodstain found in the garage belonged to Holly. The community of Decatur County united in efforts to find her as search operations involving authorities, search dogs, helicopters, and numerous volunteers scoured the area tirelessly each day, hoping for any sign of Holly. The police collaborated with AT&T to track Holly's cell phone movements, which led them towards Gooch Road, where its signal ceased around 8.30 to 9 a.m. Authorities focused on individuals close to Holly like Clint due to his familiarity with her routine and surroundings. He underwent scrutiny, including body examinations for scratches, computer searches, phone monitoring, and polygraph tests, which eventually cleared him of any involvement in his sister's disappearance. Following Holly's abduction, a trail of evidence emerged along the country roads in the days and weeks that followed. Her belongings were found scattered randomly, including her homework, notebook, cell phone, and the lunch her mother had prepared for her on that fateful morning. A week after Holly's disappearance, the community came together for a solemn vigil, holding on to hope and praying for her safe return. Despite the uncertainty, the people of Decatur County remained united drawing strength from their small-town community spirit and unwavering determination to bring Holly back home. As time passed, the names of Zach Adams, his brother Dylan, cousin Jason Autry, and friend Shane Austin became central figures in the investigation surrounding Holly's abduction. These individuals were known in the community for their troubled past and involvement with illicit activities. Zach Adams particularly caught the attention of law enforcement due to his extensive criminal record involving illegal substances, robbery, and assault. 
His history included shooting his own mother and making threats against his grandparents. When the police visited Zack's home following Holly's disappearance, he denied any involvement vehemently, providing an alibi of being at home with his girlfriend and brother on the morning she went missing. Lacking sufficient evidence for an arrest, the authorities had to release him. The focus then shifted to Terry Britt, a registered offender residing near Holly's home with a history of criminal behavior including kidnapping. His past offenses targeted young women resembling Holly in appearance. Britt's proximity to Holly's last known location raised suspicions, leading to a visit from law enforcement. Despite preemptively denying any wrongdoing upon their arrival, claiming innocence, and providing an alibi of buying a bathtub with his wife that couldn't be verified by store records. Cadaver dogs indicated potential traces in Brit's vehicles and tools on his property, prompting further investigation, including wiretapping and surveillance efforts, which failed to yield concrete evidence linking him to Holly's disappearance. A recorded conversation between Brit and TBI agent Terry Dykus revealed disturbing fantasies about Holly's abduction, raising concerns. Despite this unsettling content, Britt maintained his innocence as investigators struggled to find conclusive proof against him. The discovery of a receipt for the bathtub in Britt's possession added a new dimension to the case, but failed to provide a breakthrough. With the investigation at a standstill, authorities decided to shift their focus away from Terry Britt as they continued their search for answers in Holly's disappearance. After three years of little progress, a significant turn of events unfolded in February 2014, reigniting the investigation into Holly Bobo's disappearance. Zach Adams, one of the initial suspects, faced new legal troubles involving robbery and threatening his girlfriend's sister at gunpoint, leading to his incarceration. During this time, his brother Dylan encountered legal issues related to firearms theft. Despite Dylan's learning disability and below average IQ, he managed to secure a plea deal for the gun charges and was placed under the care of a retired police officer who was a family friend of the Bobos. Shortly after moving in with the officer, Dylan made a startling revelation to emergency services, claiming to have information about Holly's fate. According to Dylan, he witnessed Holly in Zach's living room on the day she went missing, accompanied by Jason Autry and Shane Austin. Dylan alleged that these men had mistreated Holly and even recorded their actions. Zach had made disturbing remarks about Holly's disappearance over the years, hinting at exploiting her and possessing incriminating footage. Despite these claims, no such videotape was found by law enforcement. Further investigations revealed that both Zach and Jason had been students of Karen Bobo, Holly's mother. Shane Austin was initially granted immunity in exchange for cooperation, but lost this immunity due to alleged non-compliance. In September 2014, a local man discovered human remains while hunting for ginseng in the woods, later confirmed to be Holly's. The emotional toll on Holly's family was evident during the trial, as personal items belonging to her were recovered alongside her remains. Shane Austin tragically took his own life in February 2015, while Zach, Dylan and Jason faced legal battles for three more years before pleading not guilty to charges related to Holly's case. In 2017, Jason Autry struck a deal with prosecutors, accepting an eight-year sentence in exchange for testifying against the other suspects at trial. His testimony provided new details contradicting Dylan's earlier statements. Jason described witnessing the kidnapping and assault of Holly by Zach, Dylan, and Shane. He recounted events leading to Holly's tragic demise by the Tennessee River and revealed Zach's attempts to silence Dylan afterward. Despite challenges in linking Zach directly to Holly's disappearance through phone records and witness testimonies, he was found guilty in 2017 and sentenced to life in prison. The legal aftermath saw Dylan pleading guilty to a lesser charge, while Jason faced new legal troubles post-release from prison. The Holly Bobo Act was introduced in 2020 to enhance missing person alerts for individuals under 21 in Tennessee. Despite the complexities surrounding the case, Holly's family found closure with Zach's conviction and sentencing. Her memory lives on as a symbol of justice and resilience in the face of adversity.